Welcome to the fifth episode of the Rigs Podcast. I am your host, Sonny Mengden. This is the final episode of the series by Dr. Dr. Sonam Kinga on the institution of monarchy. In the two previous episodes of this series, Dr. provided a comparative perspective on Bhutan as a monarchy and talked on what makes Bhutan's monarchy modern as opposed to the general perception of the institution being outdated. In this final episode of the trilogy series, Dasha will reveal the lesser known facts on the short yet very important text of the Genja or the contractual agreement of 1907 that defined Bhutan as a modern monarchy and changed the course of Bhutan's history forever. Dasha explains the format and significance of the Genja in Bhutan's history and provides his analysis on its symbolism and the content. By the end of the talk we will get a better sense of why the unanimous enthronement of Konsa Ugyewanchu as the first hereditary king in 1907 was an answer to the collective aspirations of the Bhutanese people. Tasha points out that the three historic events in the formation and development of the Bhutanese nation state that is the promulgation of the Belden Drukchung by Shabdung Ngawang Namgyal the founding of monarchy and the introduction of parliamentary democracy all during times of peace and stability is something very unique to Bhutan as we eagerly look forward to watching the live national day address of his majesty the king tomorrow from the magnificent punda devi chambi podang what can be a better reminder of the historic event that took place 113 years ago in the same place where Gonsa Ugyewanchu was enthroned as the first king of Bhutan and the historic Genja was adopted that laid a secure foundation for Bhutan's future we hope you'll be able to better connect with our history and gain a deeper understanding of the essence of our national day by the end of the talk <music> In this final episode of the series on Bhutanese monarchy I will discuss the text of the historic Genja it is actually quite auspicious that the 113th national day celebrations will take place within the precincts of Punakhadzong where the Genja was adopted many of us have seen the imprint of the Genja either in history textbooks in social or mainstream media but actually haven't really read through it it's not a long text it's actually only half a page but quarter of the page is just the names of people and communities who imprinted their seals on the genja the substantive part of the text is therefore just quarter of a page let me talk about the format of the genja first Although it has become a convention to refer to this text as a genja the genja refers to itself as a gen tsik words of undertaking it starts with a salutation because the genja is in the form of a submission or should we say an application it begins with these lines lugni gongma timdak rimboche shabdungdu at the feet of the lord of laws supreme of the two traditions the first question we need to ask is to whom is this submission being made it cannot be to shabdung jigme chogel the last gets up and head of the monastic regime because he had passed away 3 years ago at that point of time there were none of the other exalted reincarnations there was sungtel chogle ishingedup but he had already served once as the gets up and later served as the druk desi in fact the last druk desi but he too had retired just a year earlier hence the submission also could not have been made to him the submission also could not have been to konsa uge wangchu because he was also one of the signatories making the submission my assessment is that it is being symbolically addressed to shabdrung boche and i say it for two reasons first on the top of the genja is the huge imprint of the seal of nga chudruma nga chudruma was a 16 line poetry which shabdung rimboche 
composed in 1618 at Tango. The poetry was curved onto a wooden block and would later constitute the official seal of the monastic state. So there is this symbolic representation of Shabdu Rinpoche very prominently visible on the top of the text. The second reason I think the submission is being made to Shabdu Rinpoche is from the first line of the poetry of Ngachuruma, which begins thus, Lugni Kholo Jurwa Nga, I who turn the wheel of two traditions, Lugni, two traditions or dual system, and by that Shabdu Rinpoche referred to himself, Lugni Kholo Jurwa Nga. The fact that the Genja also starts by the words, Lugni, therefore makes me think that this submission is symbolically made to Shabdun Rinpoche, whose holy remains are in Punaka Zong. The actual substantive part of the text, which is about six rows or six lines, are followed by a list of people and communities. We have, firstly, the seal of the monastic community, followed immediately by Tongsa Penlop. The seal is referred to only as Chue Tse. Then these are followed by seven other seals of members of the state council or Lenge Tsok. Let's recall that the monastic regime had a cabinet called Lenge Tsok where there were about nine members traditionally referred to as Kalen Chewa Gu. So including the DC and others, there were nine members. But as I said, just mentioned that the last desi had retired. So there were eight of them including Konsa Ugyamachu. So therefore, eight seals after the seal of the monastic community. Then we see 25 different seals of Nikems who were senior public servants as well as regional governors. In their own right, they represented themselves, their offices, and also the region they administered. Then we have five collective seals of junior public servants known as Chibshen, public servants who were entitled perhaps to the use of horses as means of transport, chip, horse, Chibshen, those who had a mount. Then there are the eight seals of the communities of Bhutan. They are Wan Sochin Ge Thimpu, Te Dage Chusu, Modern De Punaka, Sha Dage, Wandifoda, Bako Tsudu, and Sento Lindu, Paro, He Gishi, Ha, Daka Lingsum, Dagana, and Sharcho Kolo Tsibge, the different Zonkaks under the jurisdiction of Trongsa Den. The name of the Seals also differ. The monastic seal is known as Chitam. Trongsa Penlops has been referred to as Chue Chue. The seals of the eight other members of the Lenge Tso are called Tak. And those of the junior public servants and the community are called Thiu. The seals of the members of the state council and those of the senior public officials are imprinted after the mention of their official positions and their names. On the other hand, the seals of the junior public officials are affixed after the mention not of their individual names but of their official positions. Following them are the seals of the communities. What we see is the seals of the junior officials and the communities are representative collective in nature, whereas the seals of the state councillors and the senior public officials are associated with their individual names and offices. Most of these seals are circular in shape, except for three. The large seal of Ngachuruma, which is square in shape, and the seals of the horse master Rinzin Doji and Chongar Zompen, Karma, are also square in shape. We have a total of only about 22 rows or lines and then 48 seals on the historic Genja. So this is really the format of the Genja. Let me now discuss the content of the Genja. The substantive part of the text is only about 6 lines. However, 
these are packed with meanings and symbolism that we need to read time and again in order to be able to decipher and decode all the spirit and intent of the genja for the purpose of my analysis i will fall back upon the why how what when where of this genja in fact it starts with the why why is monarchy being established so there is a problem statement it begins with the statement that in the kingdom of druk the thesis had so far come from the monastic body the state councillors and the regional governors but there had been no king what this statement does is problematize the position and office of the druk desi read in the historical context of which this genja was drafted i think the statement is pointing out the lack of a coherent institutional and structural means of how a desi comes into office then it goes on to say therefore we now enthrone the tonsa penlop as the hereditary monarch and recognize his descendants as successors to the golden throne this is the what of the genja how was this arrived at the genja makes it very clear that all the above referring to the members of the monastic community state councillors and the regional governors as well as the public mister have now through consensus kamel and through harmonization of their collective aspiration de tin deva timba come into this agreement to enthrone konsa uge wanchu and recognize his descendants as successors to the golden throne what it is saying is that this has been done in an atmosphere of peace and consensus without coercion by anyone or without any duress this is a very important pointer about the atmosphere in which this genja was drafted and executed it may be recalled that when shabdung rimboche promulgated the first buddhist government in the himalayas pelden drukshung in 1626 it was also done in a time of peace the first sang desi invasion took place in 1618 followed only later in 1634 so in between there was an era of peace his majesty jimmy singh wanchu also introduced parliamentary democracy during a time of peace in an absence of popular demand when he was at the height of his popularity when the country enjoyed peace and stability what i am trying to say is three historic events in the process of bhutan's state and nation building exercise the promulgation of pelden dukshun the founding of monarchy and the introduction of parliamentary democracy takes place in a time of peace such developments are historically unprecedented elsewhere particularly in relation to important regime changes it continues thus since the enthronement of konsa uje wanchu had now been accomplished we commit ourselves never to deviate from the sacred oath we have taken so if anyone does deviate then the undertaking is that the person who speaks evil words or who speaks through two tongues in one mouth would be expelled from the community the genja now goes on to state the date on which this agreement was drafted 17 december 1907 corresponding to the 13th day of the 11th month it also specifies that this historic movement took place in the sacred punaka zong the genja of 1907 reconfirms and revalidates the position that uge wanchu already enjoyed as the de facto leader of the country so how tongsa penlop is referred to in the genja is very important he is referred to as druk chichap tongsa penlop sa uge wanchu although he was the tongsa penlop but the text makes conscious effort to refer to him as druk chichap or supreme of bhutan by using the title sir the genja also takes on board the fact that he was offered in 1905 the title of the knight commander of the indian empire let me now discuss what challenges and problems were addressed by the establishment of the monarchy let me start 
with the position of the Gatsab, which we know were occupied by the exalted reincarnations. There were a couple of issues associated with this monastic regime. Firstly, there were situations sometimes when no reincarnations appeared after the demise of a former one. So there was a vacuum, there was a discontinuity in leadership. Sometimes there were multiple contenders to the throne, which means factions developed around each contender or claimant to the throne. This often pitted the exalted reincarnations against one another, resulting in conspiracy and internecine conflict. Except for a few of them, many of these exalted reincarnations were enthroned at a very young age, which means they were actually growing up and getting educated, but actual power was exercised by the Desis and the Penelopes. There were about 59 Druk Desis. Some of them enjoyed comparatively a peaceful and also longer tenure, but some were forced out of office, some were killed. Generally, Bhutan experienced a high degree of political instability during the reign of the Druk Desis. This office also did not have a systemic and structured way of transferring power and ensuring succession. What is generally or conventionally seen as a weakness in monarchy, hereditary succession, becomes a strength in the Bhutanese case when we factor in our historical circumstances. So what the Genja of 1907 does is institutionalizes the transfer of state power from one leader to the next. As the crown princess now succeeded to the throne, either at the demise or abdication of his royal predecessor, through the principle of hereditary succession, which was enshrined in the Genja, Bhutan now enjoyed continuity of leadership. For Bhutan, this was critical in maintaining our political stability. You not only had continuity of leadership, you also had maturity of leadership. Kwonsa Uge Wanchu ascended the throne at the age of 44 years. Kwonsa Jimmy Wanchu ascended the throne at the age of 21 years. His Majesty Jimmy Doji Wanchu at the age of about 24 years. His Majesty the fourth king when he was 17 years old and his Majesty the King took over the responsibilities of kingship at the age of 26. So what we see is our kings who have been groomed, who have been trained from a young age to succeed. We are talking about meritocracy. Not only have they been trained, but they assume at a mature age and compare that with the ages at which the Gatsabs have taken offices. The other element that flows out of hereditary succession is the fact that we enjoy, Bhutan begins to enjoy political stability as a consequence of longer reign of the monarchs. The reign of the first king was 19 years. That of the second king was about 26 years. His Majesty the third king reigned for 20 years. His Majesty the fourth king for 34 years. So in summary, the establishment of the monarchy and the principle of hereditary succession ensured a couple of things. First, the institutionalized transfer of power from one leader to the next. Second, the continuity of the leadership. Third, maturity of leadership. And fourth, political stability owing to longer reign of the successive monarchs. All these were crucial components of the Bhutanese state for the purpose of its survival development and continuous socio-economic and political reforms. With this, I conclude the series of three talks on Bhutanese monarchy. I would like to reiterate my appreciation to Rix for the opportunity. I have drawn most of the materials for these talks from my ongoing research to write a book on Buddhist kingship and modern monarchy. And I have had the support of Dr. Lotus Ring, Honorable Prime Minister, Tasho Penjor of RMA, Tasho Tseong Rinzin of DGPC, and Tasho Ugen Tseong and Tasho Karma Yuzaredi of DHI. I'm very thankful for their support. Thank you. 
With this, we come to the end of this episode on the Genja of 1907 and also the trilogy series of talks by Dr. Dr. Sonam Kinga on the institution of Bhutanese monarchy, which has been especially curated to commemorate the 113th National Day of Bhutan. We would like to express our earnest gratitude to Dasho on behalf of all our listeners for providing us a deep dive on a subject that is very dear to every Bhutanese, our cherished institution of monarchy. That, in Dasho's words, are synonymous with Bhutan's survival, modernity and prosperity. Each episode of the trilogy series has been thoroughly interesting, insightful and educative and we are sure all our listeners in Bhutan and around the world enjoyed listening to this special series. Particularly for the Bhutanese audience, it provided us with a deeper understanding and appreciation on the role of the institution of monarchy in shaping our nation and the essence of celebrating our National Day on 17th December every year. We really look forward to reading Dashu's book on the Buddhist kingship and modern monarchy and we wish Dashu the very best with this exciting initiative. Finally, as we celebrate our 113th National Day tomorrow, Rix joins the nation to offer our deepest respects and gratitude and humble Tashidele to the Wangchuk dynasty for all the sacrifices and extraordinary leadership that have greatly shaped the destiny of our beloved country and her people. We wish all the Bhutanese a very happy National Day. Lah.